So here's the Razzmatazz grape, guys, that a lot of you are following. And in this video, I've, you know, in a previous video, I think I talked about my Razzmatazz grape, but for those of you who may have missed it, I want to go over it. Um, I also want to talk about my jujubes very quickly, and we're going to do like a two-in-one video because we have a whole area here that uh, something had died in. We lost a loquat tree. Um, I was just inspecting some of these things, like these are my nectarines here, and I was looking at the Razzmatazz grape, and I was looking at the Che tree that is hopefully going to fruit for me. It may drop or, or continue fruiting, who knows. But, you know, I wanted to look at some of these guys with a closer eye, you know, also observe some of my younger pomegranate trees, and I'm noticing that they're very thin. They just look very sparse to me, and I know it's not a fertilizer issue. I don't know what it is, so... Uh, hopefully these guys come to life very soon and, and um, start growing really well because some of my other pomegranate trees that's much older and got much more attention from me seem to be doing a lot better. But I guess we could start with the jujubes very quickly and go to the Razzmatazz grape afterwards. Here is the jujubes. This is really, really a reliable crop here for me. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the varieties that I've, I've chosen, as well as the fact that I'm growing them in containers. You know, they're 10-gallon size pots, nothing too big. Uh, but this is my honey jar, I believe. And honey jar is, I think, the earliest. Or maybe it's sugarcane that's the earliest. But uh, one of these two is very early, and I think it has, I think it's actually honey jar, which you can see is just loaded with fruits. It still has plenty of flowers on it. And a lot of them are still flowering at this point. Um, they're all pretty much flowering at the same time. Whereas my sugar cane is a newly... I just got this tree from a, uh, a nursery and you can see there are flowers on it. So even just getting a tree from a nursery, uh, you can still get lots of flowers and you can still get lots of fruit set. So hopefully the sugar cane fruits for me and we'll get to try that one. Um, we have my Lang, or my Lee, I'm sorry, which is my oldest tree, my largest tree, my strongest tree. This one actually doesn't seem to be putting out nearly as many fruits as Honey Jar this year. I don't know if that's because Lee put out so many fruits last year. I'm not sure, but you can see that there is some flowers, there is some fruit on this tree, and it is doing pretty decently, um, but nowhere near as good as it was doing last year, I think. So we will get to eat Lee again, and Lang right next to it is another one that um, it needs a pollinator, right? A lot of people say that it needs Lee to pollinate Lang, and as a result, I've really not been a fan of Lang because it hasn't really produced all that well for me. You can see it's the smallest of the four trees, but it's also one of the oldest. So I've had this one for quite some time, but I, I got it as a small tree about this size here and then the first year I had it it suckered quite profusely and I had planned to take those suckers and I had planned to uh, dig them up but it ended up working out so that it, it impeded the growth of the the Lang tree and as a result it has not been very productive even if the, the year after that where there was no suckers present at all so what I've decided to do is graft a new variety onto it called Zuzho and Zuzhou is actually flowering really, really heavily. And it looks like it's probably going to put out lots of fruits. And you can see that Lang is completely, the flowers are open just at the same time as everything else. So there should be absolutely no reason why Lang doesn't have a good fruit set. Absolutely no reason. The, the only thing I'm slightly worried about is maybe the fact that there's not enough wind if these are wind pollinated or if there's not enough bees. Uh, I haven't seen too many bees, and in fact, I've never seen a bee on my jujubes before, so who really knows what the deal is and if these guys will even get pollinated. We already have a couple fruits that have fallen off here on my honey jar. This one looks like it was eaten by something, so hopefully the birds leave these guys alone. So Historically, they've never really been bothered by anything. Um, but there always is some fruit drop every year. On to the Razzmatazz grape, which I'm sure most of you guys are also interested in. This is the continuously fruiting Muscadine grape. It's bred with a table grape, a typical European 
The uh, Japanese beetles love this guy, uh, but nothing else bothers it. Um, I guess birds would bother it if the fruit would ever ripen for me. But um, ever since these guys first started to put out clusters, you know, quite early in the season, they haven't done anything. They literally have not done anything. We've had this is the first cluster in which we're getting much of any any fruit set. Uh, the clusters form and it seems to grow and grow and grow. Some of the clusters seem to fall off, but the large majority of them never actually f have set fruit. Um, a lot of them are still just sitting here in a way that makes me think that uh, they're never going to ripen. In fact, my European grapes, which are right over here, are actually ripening now. They're ripening in the next two weeks. And my Muscadine Rasmataz grape doesn't have any fruit on it at all. Uh, well, very, very small fruits down here. I know that it's a very late to ripen uh, species of fruit, right? So the muscadine uh, fruits quite late in the season. It's more of a fall grape. And that's acceptable because nothing really bothers it in the fall, right? You know, there's no diseases that bother these things. So I don't mind that they ripen in the fall. You know, it's, it's a nice thing to have in succession after um, a table grape, right? Or you got the, the gooseberry first, which is very similar to a grape, and then you've got the table grape, the European table grape, and then you have these, the muscadine grape, following up right after that. So you kind of have, if you wanted, a really full succession of uh, grapes. The problem with the muscadines is that you can't really grow them here in the ground in zone 7. Um, there are varieties that are hardy to zone 7, and I did my research very recently because I'm realizing that this muscadine may just be a very late ripening variety. Even though I have it in a container, you would think, even though I have it in a container, by principle, it would fruit earlier, but it's, it's not. It's still quite late. And, you know, we're going to let this guy fruit here. We are going to let him fruit and see what happens. Taste the fruit. It's supposed to be quite good. But my hopes are low. So what I'm planning for next year is that we're going to take some space over here. And we've got, we've got a grape here that died. Uh, this was my interlocking or hemrod. I'm not. I'm blanking on which one it is right now. I have to look at the tag, but you can see that the the rootstock survived. The top, for whatever reason, did not, and the rootstock survived. So what I'm doing is letting a shoot grow. We got to stake this up here, and we'll let the shoot grow. Probably get a pretty decent thickness, and we'll graft something onto it, like uh, Concord, which does really well here. So maybe we'll have a conquered grape here. Uh, but we have also have some pretty good empty space over here, which has been mainly for my lettuce bed and a very unsuccessful lettuce bed at that. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to move the lettuce bed to a different area of the yard, gets different sunlight, a place that I can irrigate this. You know, the irrigation is set up. You can see this black tube here, but uh, it's really not something that I want to irrigate over on this side of the yard. So what we're going to do is probably plant some muscadines here. I found a couple varieties that people are growing in zone 7, even 6, 6B, and they're having really good success with them. Uh, down to like negative 10, negative 12, there's very few varieties, if any, that will do this. Maybe even not reliably, but um, I heard that if you protect the base, the thing will come back year after year with no problems, similar to a fig. So. Even if it's not as hardy as I believe they are, we can, you know, get a wire from that pole all the way over to this pole, and we can grow maybe two or three varieties of muscadine grapes right here, which would be really cool, right? Uh, we also have the grape that I'm really looking forward to, which is a Concord grape, but improved. It's not Concord seedless. It was bred by um, someone in New York. I, I'm blanking on the name here, guys, but. I've talked about it before, and that grape is another grape that I'm really looking forward to, as it's very similar to Concord, but it's uh, seedless. But it's not the typical Concord seedless that they usually sell in the, in the um, various online nurseries. That one is really not that great. So, anyway, guys, those are my plans, and that's what's going on with the the Rasmataz grape, and that's also the deal with the the, the jujubes. When both of these guys fruit including the European table grapes. We'll get a video for you guys uh, and we'll start 
doing a little bit of taste testing and getting a little bit more in, in depth with how these guys are being grown. So anyway, everyone, um, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.